This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad T480. This is no Mickey Mouse laptop. Couldn't resist. This one here is your bread and butter 14 inch business laptop that doesn't try to be the thinnest, the lightest, the sexiest, though happily the T-Series has gotten slimmer, has gotten lighter over time. 3.6 pounds, which is 1.63 kilograms, you know, not super duper light, almost 20 millimeters thick, but that's actually an improvement. But what's so good about this, what makes it not Mickey Mouse is the fact that it's like the laptops of old that you could actually upgrade. You can take off the bottom here, undo some screws, and besides that, look, removable battery. This has a Lenovo Bridge battery system. They've been doing that for a couple of years, and that's good stuff. You have an internal battery that's 24 watt hour, and this removable one here available in two sizes, so lots of runtime as a result. But also, when you open up these two RAM slots, and relatively speaking, still a fairly thin and light 14 inch Ultrabook, that's pretty rare. Then you have your usual M.2 SSD slot for, well, an SSD drive, your socketed Wi Fi card, your optional LTE bay also. M2 socket in there and a hard drive base. So all of that stuff is kind of like old school, awesome sauce, makes your IT department happy and even makes some folks who aren't IT folks happy because you want something that you can grow into or grow beyond when you actually need to add more RAM, a bigger hard drive, whatever that sort of thing is. It starts around $1,050 or so. We're going to look at it now. So the T480 has a, relatively speaking for a ThinkPad, fairly low starting price of $1,050. That gets you <laughs> not the most exciting configuration. You do get a Core i5, and these are all Intel 8th generation quad core 15 watt U-series Ultrabook CPUs. And Lenovo's done some nice things here, just like with the other ThinkPads we've reviewed recently, where they're, they're giving them a little extra wattage, a little extra power, so they run a little bit faster than you might expect, sort of like Dell does with the XPS 13, the 9370 latest generation model. So that model that I'm talking about, the base model, has a Core i5, and it has 8 gigs of RAM, DDR4, 2400 megahertz, that part's good, and a 500 gig hard drive. Hard drive, that's nostalgic, isn't it? You don't see that in Ultrabooks much, but you know, some people do just need lots of cheap storage, so I'm not really going to make fun of that. And if you want to spend some more money, you can get an M.2 PCIe NVMe Fast SSD, all the way up to one terabyte in capacity. You can go to 256, you can get a 512, you get the idea. So you have options. That base model also has a 1366 by 768 display, not even full HD. This is the stuff the IT department buys when they hate you. No, not really. This this is when, when they're budget constrained and the boss tells them, okay, you got to outfit 25 people with decent, durable laptops that meet mil-spec standards are pretty thin, not bad looking, great keyboards. Uh, so skimp on the display. So that's why that option exists. You probably want to go with the full HD display, which is available in touch or non-touch versions. Those are IPS displays and they're matte. They're all matte, which is nice, even the touch models. And there's like no glare on them, which is a good thing. It's the same panels that are used also on the T480S that we recently reviewed. Now, the the 1080p panels themselves still don't have such great color gamut, uh, unfortunately. The brightness is okay at 246 nits. In fact, it's the same panel whether you get non-touch or touch in terms of the panel ID number. You can see the metrics on screen there. So it's not a hor horrible panel, but it's not super fantastic. But they do, do have a WQHD resolution. That's the 2560 by 1440 option. That's non-touch and matte, but it look, I bet that that one has some somewhat better color calibration and color saturation that probably matches the standard for consumer laptops in this price point, which would be about full sRGB and 75% of Adobe RGB. When it comes to performance, you have the story is pretty much the same as the X1 Carbon and the T480S and all the other Intel 8th Gen ThinkPads that we reviewed so far. They're using the Ultrabook CPUs inside, which is to say they're fast, and Lenovo has done a very good job with cooling and also with providing a little extra watch to the CPU to get better than average benchmarks even over time. Like the PC Mark 8 benchmark, which I always tell you folks is one of the longer running benchmarks, takes up to a half an hour to complete. And usually you see a graph where it goes like this in terms of the clock speed. It drops out a turbo boost so much. And with this one, it's pretty much straight across the top like you'd see with a 45 watt mobile workstation or a gaming laptop. So that's the good stuff there. You got Intel UHD 620 integrated graphics, NVIDIA MX150 dedicated graphics, is optional, a two gigabyte of RAM for a VRAM for that. Uh, 
it'll give a little extra, uh, you know, it's not going to turn into a gaming laptop or anything like that, but a little bit of extra kick. And yeah, if you're playing something like Skyrim, in fact, you will get somewhat better frame rates because that's not a very demanding game. It's kind of old, but it's there to give Premiere a little extra chutzpah and uh, that sort of thing. We don't have that, unfortunately. Lenovo didn't send us that model. I'd like to see what the thermals are like, but typically it's been used in so many laptops now that are thin and light. I don't expect there's going to be much of a thermal issue going on there. One trick though, Lenovo wants you to buy a vPro CPU, which is the slightly more expensive CPU option. It's not technically required, but they're just doing this because they want you to spend a little more money. You get a, obviously a larger heatsink if you do that because they're going to put a heatsink over the CPU and the dedicated GPU as well. Other options include a 4G LTE modem, and you've got a fingerprint reader. It's usually about 11 bucks or so on the on the deck of the laptop. You probably want one of those. There's the Think Shutter. If you get the 720p standard webcam, it's that little sliding door that they have on ThinkPads now. That well, if you want to make sure you're not being watched by anybody, you can slide that shut and feel safe. But if you go with the Windows Hello IR camera, then you can't get the Think Shutter because they don't want you to get in the way of your logging in using your face. It's also a smart card reader option, a usual DTPM 2.0 with encryption on chip for that fingerprint reader and so on so that it's harder for anybody to hack into it. So it's a business laptop. They go with security, they go with that mil spec sturdiness for dust, for vibration, for shock, you know, all that sort of stuff. You can go up to 32 gigs of RAM, which is pretty hardy for an Ultra. Most Ultrabooks stop at 16 gigs of RAM. You have two RAM slots there. None of the RAM is soldered on board, so it's DDR4, 2400 megahertz again, so that's fast RAM. So that's pretty nice, and that makes it a little different and a little bit more of a power user machine for those of you out there doing, say, virtual machines, VMs, and you're running several VMs. You need more RAM to do that more than anything else. You've got four cores to throw at it. Now you've got the RAM to throw at it, too. Lastly, the big selling points here are all the ports that you don't usually see on a fairly portable 14-inch laptop anymore, including an actual Ethernet jack built in, an SD card slot that houses an entire SD card. It does not stick out in an annoying way. You've got full-size HDMI. You have two USB 3.0 ports on here. You have the Lenovo docking connector for the latest style docking station that side mounts on there. And you have a USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 port. And the charger is USB-C based. So you'll have to find a splitter if you need to charge it or a dock or something like that at the same time as using those ports. And Hardware Info 64 Utility reports that as being four lanes. So it should be full speed all the way for that too. So that's a good thing there. So it's a nice little modern touch. And again, for you power users. As ever, it's one of the best keyboards on the market. Lenovo's keyboards are just so comfy. You get better than average key travel. You have excellent damping. The whole thing just feels cushy in all the right ways, but not mushy. It's a wonderful typing experience for those of you who do content creation via the written word. The trackpads are also quite good. It's a roomy enough trackpad, Microsoft Precision style these days. And you have the nav point eraser stick pointer with its own little dedicated buttons too. So one of the stars of the show here is Lenovo's Bridge battery system, which sadly has disappeared from the X line with the X280, but still here with the T480. If you get the T480S, the slimmer, lighter model, you do not get the removable battery, the Bridge battery system. Likewise, the Carbon doesn't have that, so that's still one of those little power user things that sets it apart. Slide two latches, you remember how that was with laptops in the old days, right? And there it is, the battery. So this is the smaller battery. It's available in two different capacities. This is the 24 watt hour, which is the same capacity, as the three cell internal battery. This one obviously sits flush with the product. So if you want it to look like as slim as possible, there you have it. And Lenovo claims around 15.6 hours of runtime with this plus this, which is about oh, 48 watt hour of battery, which is really optimistic. Lenovo, like most PC manufacturers, is overly optimistic. You can also get the 72 watt hour battery, which will stick out. It'll have a hump. It'll also raise it for maybe what you would consider a more comfortable typing position. They claim up to 30 hours. Okay, that's also optimistic. So with our battery right here, our standard small size battery, I've been getting about eight to nine hours, which is pretty darn good. This is with the 1080p display and a Core i5 CPU inside. Core i5 versus Core i7 usually doesn't make much of a difference when you're talking about the same 15 watt U series CPUs inside. So you can estimate that we're probably talking 15, 16 hours if you get the extended battery. But the best part is you can buy a bunch of these if you need. If you're on the road for a long time and you're just away from electricity, just buy several of these things. Swap them in as you need them. So that's the joy of that there. 
All right, to take the bottom cover off, ironically, since this is one of the most upgradable laptops you probably would want to upgrade, it's a little bit more annoying to get the bottom off. There's Phillips head screws, they're all visible. It's just the clips around the battery bay are a little bit tenacious. Maybe you can work it off, and then there you have it. There's the internals right there. That's the front 24 watt hour battery for the bridge battery system, the one that's nominally sealed inside, because well, you have to unscrew it and take it apart to get to that battery right there. Here we have our hard drive bay. You can recognize the cage right there for those of you who tinker with your laptop. So where is the M.2 SSD slot? Aha, you can't have both a hard drive and an M.2 slot because you take that out and notice we have the SSD mod. We don't have a hard drive. Hard drive could fit in here, but what they do if you go with the M.2 SSD and even PCIe is they put on this little daughter card here and then they mount it into here using the hard drive bay. Crafty, very crafty. So there's that. Stereo speakers, one on each side. Pretty decent sounding, just like the T480S, in fact. And we have two RAM slots. Both cover the little Mylar. There's one slot. And this is the other one. We have an 8 gig module on ours. We have 8 gigs of RAM total. The max would be 32 gigs if you went with two 16 gig modules. And it's DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM that they're going with here. The other stuff would be if you want your optional 4G LTE, that's the slot for that right there. We don't even have any wires in here pre-installed for that for ours. And this is your Wi-Fi card, which is an Intel 8265AC card right there. And that's our really decent sized fan there. And it is effective in terms of cooling, in terms this does not get hot to the touch nor loud. Now we don't have the NVIDIA MX150 graphics option. Here's our CPU under the heatsink and the NVIDIA Stuff would go right over here, and the heat sink would extend over if we had that. And again, they're tying that to the purchase of a V Pro CPU. So they're doing a little upcharge there. It's not that it would be an absolute technical requirement. They just want to sell it that way. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad T480 14-inch Business Ultrabook, available in your choice of black, black, or black. Some Lenovos are now also available in silver. This is not one of them. Uh, so now you see, we also have the Lenovo ThinkPad T480S review out. So you, if you're wondering what the difference is with that slimmer one, besides the fact that it's slimmer and lighter, what the differences are, you can watch that. And I will be doing a SmackDown, or really just a, not a SmackDown so much as a comparison so you can figure out which of the 14-inch Lenovo Ultrabooks is for you. Because we have the ThinkPad X1 Carbon 6th Gen, a lot of similarities. We have this T480 and the T480S, so that's going to be coming up too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.